On this episode of Country Boy Gas Garage, we're heating things up as I get my redemption on these old rusty exhaust bolts. Let's go. Alright guys, well in this video is pretty much round two to me getting these old rusty exhaust bolts off. Um, you know, in the last video I, I attempted to get them off. Uh, I knew I didn't have the right tools and uh, well you guys roasted me in the comments and sure let me know. Um, but I had to start somewhere and give it a try. Um, you know, I've been lucky in the past to put a wrench on an exhaust bolt and have it just come loose, but uh, not these ones, no. Uh, so I did pick up a proper uh, oxyacetylene torch in tanks. Now with that proper torch set up, we're going to be able to get these bolts red hot and they should be able to come off. I also picked up an impact gun um, and we're going to work at these and get these exhaust bolts off. So let's go at it. Alright, now before we get started, I did want to point out another thing. Um, I was having trouble with that alternator bracket last time and needed a spacer. Uh, a few of you guys thought that I had it upside down and told me to flip it around. But uh, there's just no way. This... Uh, bracket here is oriented in uh, such a way that it only can be mounted one way and then the mounting tabs for this alternator um, are designed in such a way that the alternator has to be mounted from underneath you can't mount it on top with this uh, gusset and everything like that um, you're suggesting that this uh, adjusting rod come up and over the top um, but that's just not the way it's designed um, you know when you order these they give you a a diagram to look at and stuff and I mounted it the way the diagram shows and now that I've got that uh, spacer and longer bolt in here um, this all lines up perfect um, as you can see the the belt is uh, all lined up nice with the pulleys um, so that's how it's supposed to be I just uh, needed a little bit of a spacer now the belt is a little bit loose so I'm gonna have to get a smaller fan belt so I can tighten that up but that's all mounted up there and since I plan on heating these uh, bolts up with the torch, I did run some uh, tin foil over those oil lines under there. Hopefully, keep those all safe out of the way. Um, and so let's get all set up, and we'll get started. Now, one thing I wanted to do before we get started is get some of this rust and scale off of these bolts. That should help us get some of that penetrating fluid in there and get a better grip with the socket. I got them all cleaned up with the wire wheel and soaked them all down with the penetrating fluid again. Now something I noticed is that, well of course on this side is the, the exhaust stud with the nut on it. That's how it looks uh, in most of the pictures I see in stock and I went and looked at a motor the other day and that's how it was on both sides. But this one, there is no studs and it just looks like uh, the head to the bolt. So I think in at some point somebody may have uh, broken the exhaust studs off or had them removed and just put a couple bolts in there. So this is going to be a different scenario when it comes to heating up the bolt and trying to get it out. You know, on this side we'll be able to heat up the nut here that's on the stud. Heating this nut up should expand the metal and release it off of the stud. Now on this side we don't necessarily want to heat up the bolt and expand the bolt. We want to heat up the material around it and expand that away hopefully releasing the bolt hopefully and now instead of just uh, heating it up and then putting the impact on there and going to town once I heat it up I am going to try by hand with the ratchet to kind of slowly move it one way and then the other and try to loosen it that way working it back and forth and then we'll try to remove it um, I really don't want to break these off um, so, well, let's see what happens.
Easy peasy on that one. She's a bit hot, I'll leave her there for a minute. And we'll get ready to do the next. Hold the pudding. We good. I think it's hot enough though. Hello guys. Well, we had a little bit of a fire. Now it was just some of that penetrating fluid that had uh, drained down on top of this foil and then I hit it with the torch and it lit. Um, I do have a fire extinguisher standing by so we weren't in too big of trouble and well, I'm glad I covered those oil lines. Um, the foil did exactly what I needed it to do. Um, well, no harm, no foul. Um, moving on. Here she comes. All right. I'll let those cool down before I pull them off all the way. It's not fitting right either. That bolt's just a little worn out. So my socket's not fitting it tight. I wonder if the impact gun is the way to go.
seeing it starting to move. Hopefully it's not breaking. I'm gonna go back the other way a little bit. And then back out. <laughs> Woo! It's always a scary moment. We got one left, guys. We're going to impact. Got her. Woo! Right, baby. All right, we got them out. Now they're really hot, so I'm not even touching them for a minute. I'll let those uh, cool down, and we'll get them all off and pull this pipe off and bring the new one out and see how that one fits. Awesome. Let's go. This tank set and these torches aren't the prettiest, but they did the job, and I'm gonna put them to work. Hey, thanks, Tony. Really appreciate it. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull these off and uh, see how well that other one fits. She is. All right, well, there's this piece that was on there that is usually uh, more components to it. I believe it's called a thermal coupler. Um, but obviously, most people bypass them, and this one's been disassembled somewhat and just has it still there for a spacer for the spacing for all the pipes to line up. But it's pretty corroded, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to reuse this. Um, I'm going to have to get another one, which I just saw at the swap meet. I should have bought it. Um, I'll go ahead and clean it up and uh, get out the gaskets and everything and uh, see if we can get this reassembled. Getting these uh, mating surfaces cleaned up. I already scraped this one. Um, I'm going to take a wire wheel to it. Yeah, so I got that all cleaned up. Now this side uh, has no studs. It had bolts that went all the way down through there. Now, well, and this side's cleaned up a bit. And this side still had the studs, but uh, one of them being coarse thread and one being fine thread. So, not everything is what it's supposed to be. Well, we're getting there. Well, I was getting this exhaust all buttoned up here and I was cleaning that one part for the exhaust side and it broke. I was thinking I needed that in there for the spacing and I probably would if I was using a stock crossover pipe. But since I bought this uh, aftermarket one here, um, when I lined it up, it's actually got a little extra length on this side to make up for that if it's been removed. So it should line right up now. Um, another thing though I did notice when I was trying to bolt this up was this does have a little extra uh, lip protruding here from that pipe. So it's not allowing me to mount this flush to the exhaust manifold. So I will need to get a grinder and grind that lip off so we can get this to mount flush. And uh, well, we'll slap in those new gaskets and get this all bolted up. Okay, I got that all ground down smooth and flat and uh, should mount up there nice and flush now.
All right, got that crossover pipe mounted. Now it's just on there loosely because, uh, well, next week I'm picking up that tailpipe from the exhaust shop. And when I do that, I'm going to pick up some new uh, exhaust studs and mounting hardware. Um, but there she is. All right, let's get the rest of this put back together. I did want to point out as I'm installing these heater hoses that, you know, these are an inch and a quarter or maybe even bigger in diameter. And I couldn't find these at O'Reilly's or any of the auto parts store. Um, I had to go to Pacific Rubber and Supply Company in West Eugene. Um, they specialize in hydraulic hoses and industrial hoses. Um, and they're very helpful and knowledgeable. They usually have everything that you need. Um, they've got all the fittings and all of that. Um, they're actually who I got these oil lines from too, these braided ones here and all the fittings. Um, so if you're in the area and you need some industrial hoses or hydraulic lines, um, get a hold of Pacific Rubber and Supply Company. Um, they'll be able to find what you're looking for. All right, as I'm putting things back together here, I can see that the proximity of this heater hose to the exhaust pipe is pretty close. Of course, once I take a couple more inches out of this hose, it should uh, move it away a little bit. But I think what I'd like to do is put an extra little sleeve right here for heat protection. Another thing I'd like to do is uh, header wrap this crossover pipe. I think it would reduce the heat a lot and keep the engine bay a lot cooler. Um, and it'll look nice and it'll help protect this uh, heater hose a bit more. And I don't know if you noticed, but as I've been working, you may have saw this. This is all pollen. Uh, everybody's hay fever and allergies are going crazy. It's everywhere right now. All right, let's get that radiator in here. Huh. Okay, that's not good. All right, let me show you guys what I'm seeing here. Oh, got the radiator in there. It's pretty much a stock replacement. It's got all the stock mounting locations, but I'm noticing that the, this fan is hitting the water port down there. Um, 
I'm gonna have to address that somehow. Looks like I might have to get a smaller fan or I don't really want to put electric fans on here. Um, but we got to figure out how to solve that problem. All right, guys, I wanted to take a moment to kind of show you what we're working with here and where we're at. You know, these are the two radiators we have. Um, we were trying to keep the bus as original as possible, but, uh, you know, not much of this bus is original. It's all been customized and modified at w one point, you know, in the 60s by the church, you know. Um, this is the radiator that we've been running in there, and this has uh, all been altered and modified to do motor swaps and all kinds of stuff, you know. This is the original 1948 Ford uh, flathead radiator, and they require uh, two inlets. There's one here, and there used to be one right there, and then two outlets. One used to be there, and one used to be here. Um, but apparently, when the church pulled the old flathead out in the 60s and put the Y block in there, they had this radiator modified to work with that. Um, they blocked off one of the inlets and both of the outlets, and then way over here on the very corner, away from that fan, they added an outlet port to make this work and it's been working pretty good but it's pretty rough now and like I was saying it I think I was quoted over eight hundred dollars to have that record um, where this one we just purchased for a couple hundred bucks and it bolts right in minus the clearance with this out port you know it's uh this one's all the way to the corner and this one's not quite all the way over so that's where the fans hitting it uh, I thought about maybe taking a couple inches off of each fan blade so it would clear that, but that fan would only be about a six inch fan a couple inches away from this way down here. That's not going to get much cooling power. So now I'm leaning towards putting an electric fan on here. Now I know it's not original and doesn't look right, but like I was saying, most of this bus isn't original. It's all been swapped out and modified and customized. You know, they did a motor swap. Uh, you know, they've swapped out the old split rim widow makers for the more modern lock ring wheels. Um, they've moved the master cylinder for the brakes up to the firewall. Um, they've upgraded the clutch system to a hydraulic setup. Yeah, this bus has been uh, customized and modified once before to keep it on the road, and I think that's what we're doing again. We're uh, trying to keep it as original as we can, but if we need to make customized modifications to make this work, then we got to do that. So, unless I come up with another plan to run the old one and that old uh, fan, which I'd like to do if we could get this all repaired, but if not, we're going to slap this one in with an electric fan because, well, we're running out of time to get this thing back on the road for the reunion. So I know uh, this aluminum radiator with an electric fan will definitely keep this bus cooler than a cucumber and a bowl of hot sauce. So I don't think we'll have any troubles there. And uh, if anything, I could spray paint it black to kind of hide it a little bit. Um, but like I was saying, unless we come up with another plan, I'm going to go ahead and slap this one in there and we'll get an electric uh, fan for it. So let's do that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. You know, it seems like it's always one step forward, two steps back. But I guess that's just the way life is. You just got to keep on keeping on. So that's what we're going to do. Now I just got to get that electric fan for the radiator, a smaller fan belt, and we got to pick up the new uh, exhaust hardware, which I'll do next week when I pick up the exhaust pipe that's being made at Junction City Muffler. Uh, I'll give you a small tour of their shop. Um, They've been around for many generations and several decades. They have rich history and they do a great job. So we'll go check out their place and we'll get those exhaust parts. And we'll continue making progress, getting this bus back on the road. You know, I couldn't do it without all you guys. So I really appreciate all of you. And we got a little bit of mail to open. So let's check it out here. And, and we got some stickers from uh, Drunker Clunkers. Um, which, uh, this is his Mustang here, cool sticker, and I love these, uh, vinyl peel-off stickers too, Junker Clunkers on YouTube. So guys, check out him, um, give him a subscribe, um, he just revived an old tractor, it's pretty cool, so check it out. Um, let's see, we got another one here from, uh, Desert Rat 2000. Um, 
We got a few stickers here as well. Oh, these are really cool. I like these. Let's check these out. Desert Rat 2000. This it says, uh, Hi, Jason. Thank you for the stickers. Here are a couple of mine. and Hope you enjoy. And you have an awesome channel and keep putting out the videos. I see you on BW's live stream. Mike, Desert Rat 2000. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. I like him. And I'll see you at BW's live stream. All right, guys, that's about it. So make sure to be sticking around for that next video. Uh, we'll get that radiator buttoned up. Um, we also got to get those exhaust parts. And, you know, we still have to dive into that gas tank and figure out what's going on in there, see if it's still usable. Um, so we'll check that out in the next video. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. So make sure everybody subscribe to the channel and you like, comment, and share with your friends. Till next time, peace. You go over to the merch store and pick you up some hoodies or t-shirts. We got all kinds of sizes. There's new items being added all the time. So go check out www.countryboygasgarage.com and pick yourself up some merch.